Welcome. In front of me is a Samsung Galaxy A30s, and today I'll show you a couple of tweaks and tricks that you can do on this device. So to begin, we're gonna begin with the gesture navigation, which will allow you to hide these pesky buttons on the bottom and substitute it for, well, I guess something less uh, gesture-y, but still, uh, it's a little bit better than this, gives you a little bit more real estate and makes the display a little bit more clean. Now, by changing it to gesture, it will also move the icons a little bit more down, so we have more space. But getting straight to it, you want to go into the settings and then display, and from here you will find navigation bar right here, and you can just choose the full screen gestures. And you can see there is like three faint bars, so in place of where you used to have buttons, you have now bars that you have to swipe up on instead of tap on it. And they're still at the same place, so recent is on the left, home is in the middle and back is on the right. And instead of tapping on it, you just kind of swipe on it like so. So I'm actually going to go back to it and disable it because on this little stand, it's harder for me to swipe from swipe for it to register if you would be holding the phone in the hand it's way easier but because the phone sinks into the stand a little bit i can't grab all the way to the down of the display okay so moving on we're gonna go into the dark mode which as you can see it's now enabled and that's well for the entire time and that's basically how it looks like and multiple things are in this mode so notification panels settings uh, apps like phone um, messages uh, Play Store and all kinds of other preloaded apps will be in this mode once you enable it. And if you want to have everything like in a dark mode, which will also preserve battery because of the Super AMOLED display that doesn't need to actually light up the pixels behind the dark, uh, like the black background, uh, it will save the battery because of that. Um, if you want to enable it, you also go into the display and you will find it somewhere right here. So let's scroll. Oh wait, there it is. It's called uh, night mode right here. I'll disable it and you can see the difference. All you need to do is just tap on it and it's now in the dark mode. Okay, so next thing that I want to show is the adaptive sound, which is hands down, in my opinion, the best option on Samsung devices. And this is not just this one, it's uh, all of the Samsung ones. But to enable it uh, and you want to go into uh, sound and vibration, um, or is it at the advanced sound settings, sound quality and effects, and from here we have adapt sound. And what this will do is basically create a customized equalizer just for your specific hearing. Now we also have the choice between the uh, preset ones of like under 30, 30, 60, and 60 and over. Uh, but I would, even though, for instance, for me, the 30 under 30 is uh, similar to the uh, to the one that I would create, uh, I would still advise on going through the setup and creating your own one. Now, because I don't have headphones, I'm not going to be able to show you how it looks like to go to the setup, and I most certainly will not be able to uh, let, allow you to hear it, because the sound that it plays is so faint that you can barely hear it with the headphones in a quiet environment. So, uh, I advise you to basically put on headphones, and be in a quiet environment for this to be set up properly. And what it will do once you do, uh, when you start the process, it just starts playing sound. Now, it doesn't tell you uh, where it's playing the sound, it's just gonna be either on left or right ear. All you really need to do is select if you can hear the sound. If you can, choose yes. If you can't, choose no. Now, you want to set it up basically, uh, honestly, so if you can't hear it, just say you can't. It, and then it boosts up the specific uh, sounds that you, for instance, can't hear uh, to the point that uh, you hear the other ones. And it creates equalizer that is literally tailored for you and works, in my opinion, amazingly. So uh, that is hands down my favorite one. And once you actually finish creating it, it will show up uh, right here in a place of uh, this right here. And you will have then option to choose between all of those plus the one that you have created. Uh, now, if you're playing music right now and you have set it up and you switch from default to the one that you have created, you will immediately hear a difference in sound uh, quality. So yeah, and you can jump around to to see which how it changes between ages. 
Okay, so moving on, uh, we're gonna go into another option that is also in the sound, which will allow you just to like an app to play uh, sound to a specific sound source. So it's gonna be in the advanced sound settings. So I just went twice back and you have the separate app sound and you want to enable it right here and tap on select. And here, normally it actually gives you, um, let's go here. Uh, first of all, once you select it, it opens up the app that you want to select for that purpose. Now, by default, it shows two of here, so uh, Chrome and YouTube. And from what I see, it's always the same, but you can also add other ones if you have different uh, music, for instance, apps that you want to use, for instance, like uh, play music or whatever it's called, um, or Spotify, whatever it is. Uh, so just select it and then you will have it showing up here and you can tap on it. Now, I'm, as an example, I'm just gonna keep I stick with the YouTube that is already selected. And then when you tap on back, uh, it would actually go into uh, this option right here. But because I'm doing this kind of all wacky, it, it, I need to set it up manually. But once you tap on back, it will open up this window right here. And here you get to choose uh, uh, the YouTube app, what it will be playing through. So you have the option from either phone or Bluetooth. So whichever one you choose, uh, it will then YouTube will be locked to playing only through that specific uh, sound source. So if you choose Bluetooth and you don't have headphones on, uh, it will try to play through Bluetooth and even if they do are not connected, uh, then it will not it will not play sound through the phone. It will continuously try to play through Bluetooth that might not be anything connected to it. So just a nice uh, nice way for you to prevent uh, prevent those like mistakes when for instance you think you have your headphones connected, you start playing music and it blasts uh, full volume on your phone and you're in a public place and it's just kind of awkward. Um, so this is really nice in my opinion. Now going back, next thing that I want to show is the uh, hiding password option. And this is just a well, really simple one. It allows you basically just to hide the password when you're typing it in. When you're typing in a password, any kind of password, you, you always can see the latest letter you have pressed and I'm not a greatest fan of that. It, for me, I maybe I have just um, PTSD that people are staring over my shoulder and uh, they will get my password. Um, so this is a nice way for you to actually hide it so there is no more letter visible. And to do it, we want to go again into the settings and then under our biometrics and security, which is right here. We're gonna go into others, which is uh, the other security settings right here. And you'll see this option, which is completely misleading in the name, make password visible. Uh, so if you're trying to uh, look for this, uh, you'd probably always search for hide password or something like that. But here it's completely other way around. So once you are here, all you need to do is just toggle it off and boom, that's, that's about done. And now whenever you're typing in any kind of password, as you can see, there is no more letter visible. The only the only visibility you can have is, for instance, when you're pressing a letter and you have that gray highlight under your finger, but that's literally about it. There's nothing else visible. So if someone is peeking over your shoulder, they will have a much harder time trying to gain your password. Okay, so moving on, we're gonna go into the smart pop-up view. And this is just a nice tweak that allows you to uh, continue whatever you're doing and interact with notifications and for instance messages on the go without actually needing to stop whatever you're doing and i'm going to show you how to uh, how to enable it if it's not by default which i'm not actually sure so number one let's go into let's go into the settings and then we're going to go into the advanced features, so all the way somewhere on the bottom, advanced features right here. And we should have smart pop-up view right here. And here you have a list of all the apps that you can enable for this feature. So all you really need to do is just tap on it like so to check it on. And you can check as many apps as you want. Now this will most likely work the best in the apps that actually give you notifications and that you interact uh, frequently with. So something like uh, Facebook message Messenger or uh, your Messenger app for just SMSs and any kind of other, uh, I guess, social media or stuff like that, the app that, that you have to type and interact with on a frequent basis and you switch frequently between it. 
So as an example, I'm just going to keep the messages as it is. And uh, once it's enabled, whenever you get a notification, so for instance, if someone writes you a message, you'll get a message normally as you do that uh, someone messaged you and part of the content of the message. And when you tap on it to interact with it, it will actually open it up in, in this kind of view. So open in pop-up view. It will be a small window that you can resize, move around and interact with while you're doing something else. And when you tap on home, uh, it will always minimize to this app head uh, and you can move it out around like so. Tap on it to extend it, tap home again to minimize it. And this, this will work no matter what you're doing. So you could have YouTube open and play music, videos, whatever, and interact with this at the same time and it will not pause music uh, or the video itself. So just a nice way. And if you want to go full screen with it, all you need to do is just tap the second option right here to extend it and it goes full screen. So fairly nice option in my opinion. Okay, yeah. now moving on, we're going to go into the reduced animation option and Samsung has one built into the device, but it's, uh, it's as useful as, well, not having it basically at all which I will completely skip altogether and not even go into where it is. I'm gonna go to an option that does the same thing, but it's hands down thousand times better. So to enable it, you wanna go into the settings again, and then about phone and find software information. And from here, you will see build number. Now you want to tap on the build number seven times to enable developer options. So you will see that you are now a developer. There was a brief moment where it was visible. And if you go back once more, we should see another option right on the bottom, developer options. Now, if you have some kind of protection of like pattern, pin, password, and you're trying to enable it, you will actually need to confirm that before you can enable the developer options. But once you do, it will give you the same message. So from here, you can tap on it. And in the developer options, scroll a little bit past halfway and you will find transition animation scale, animation duration scale, and window animation scale. Now, each one of those corresponds to a different kind of animation. For instance, the first one, which is the window animation scale, will be representative of the window that will appear with the options themselves for me to change uh, how quick it goes. So you can pay attention to how quick it pops out. I'm gonna cancel to do it once more. And that's basically the default uh, X1 speed. Now we can make it twice as fast by choosing the uh, 0.5, and that is gonna be now faster by basically twice as much and you can also choose off and then there is literally no animation of sliding it just literally appears you can still see a shadow uh, fade in and out because that is part of a different animation okay and then you have additional ones like this and this so personally i would advise it to be set to half speed which will be greatly increased in how fast it goes but it still will have animations so it won't look as jarring when you're closing and opening apps because the phone without animation looks a little bit weird when all the apps are literally popping into full screen without any kind of like animation i'm not sure if i'm just way too used to it or if it just kind of the fact that it has no animation it appears is jarring but in my opinion half speed is the best option but if you want to have it off go for it it doesn't affect it in any other way than just aesthetically and moving on, we're going to go into the game launcher, which is more designed for those people that uh, like to play uh, mobile games unironically. Uh, I sometimes do too. And this will allow you to, number one, hide the games from your app, uh, app tray right here. So if you would have any games installed, they would be, you would have the option to completely hide them from here and only be accessible through the game launcher. And also if you launch them through the game launcher, they will have additional uh, functions, for instance, like notifications can be blocked so you don't get interrupted while playing games. Let me actually just find it because I don't see it right now. Uh, where is the game launcher? Maybe I need to enable it first. So let's go into the settings. And then we're going to go into advanced features. So where is that? Uh, advanced features. And it should be somewhere here. There, so it is enabled. Oh, there it is. Game launcher right here. So when you launch it for the first time, you'll have to agree to this and just start. And number one, 
it will ask you if you want to add this to your uh, home screen which it already is so this is kind of pointless so i'm just going to tap on cancel and for some reason it didn't actually the first thing it usually does is ask you if you want to hide the games on your uh, home screen and up tray but for some reason it didn't right now and if you had the same kind of option you can go into the settings and you can make it change it right here so number it's at the very top you have it right here hide games on home screen and apps and when this is enabled like i said it will hide the games from your uh, from your device and they will be only accessible right here so once you pull that up all the games that you have installed will be only located in here and that's where you will be launching them from and here you also have some uh, other options like save mobile data they show game notification badges app not notifications um, and a couple other things so you can interact with this so for instance up notifications you can completely remove them so you don't actually get notifications while you game and boost up basically the performance of the uh, gaming uh, of the game that you're running okay so moving out of this uh, the next thing i want to show is just a smart pop-up view uh, standalone i guess which will allow you to open up any kind of app in smart pop-up view uh, apart from like what, how i showed before with the interaction of like messages so you can Theoretically open anything, even YouTube, in this kind of mode. So open in pop up view. And if I were to, if I were actually connected to Wi Fi right now, uh, I would be able to play a video in this small pop up view. I could resize it to be as small as possible. So something like this. And it would still play the video. And I can basically move it complete, almost completely out of the screen and do other stuff while, for instance, music would be playing through YouTube because no one I, I i think no one wants to pay youtube just for the fact that you can listen to music uh while the device is locked that is just absurd in my opinion um so that would be a way to do it in my in, in a way and you can do that with any kind of other app now keep in mind that if you close an app so if you have something open and you click on home it will actually minimize it into an app head and that will pause the music so if you're trying to uh, close something without actually uh, closing your music tap on back instead of home and this will keep the app open and the last thing would be similar to to this but it's just a split screen which is right here open and split screen and whatever you open up first it will do the it will go on top and then the second one will go on the bottom and this is another way you can use two different apps at the same time as you can see right now and also with YouTube it would be playing for uh, music on the bottom and you could interact with other apps uh, on top and it will continue to play now additionally if you open up YouTube first on the top and you click home bar uh, or home uh, it will minimize it but will never pause it if it's uh, as the first app as instead of the phone you would have YouTube here and it would be still open so it would continue to play yeah, but this would well, conclude all the tweaks and tricks that I'm to share. And if you found any of them helpful, don't forget to hit like, subscribe, and thanks for watching.